Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today, we talk about the kinds of Vallejo varnishes, how to use them, when to use them, and why you need to use varnishes. Also, I put an X on the thumbnail because you may not need varnishes for your painting. By the way, mats and tools are all sponsored by the following brands. I've been using varnishes, Vallejo varnishes, since forever because I use it for fine arts work and action figures. Vallejo just announced their Ultra Matte. I don't know why there's no letter E. <laughs> matte varnish. And it's very interesting. I've been using the Poly Something varnish for so long. So I'm really curious and excited for the Ultra Matte varnish. Now we talk about the kinds of Vallejo varnishes. Well, of course, you have the gloss varnishes. You have the Mecca, Poly Something, and the acrylic gloss varnishes. And also satin varnishes, basically semi-gloss varnishes with, that comes in acrylic, poly something, and mecha. And of course, the ultra awesome <laughs> matte varnishes. Watch until the end of the video for my recos. All the Vallejo varnishes have the same consistency. They have like a milky consistency. So you need to thin them for airbrush use and even for brush painting. The poly something or polyurethane varnishes are clear though, but the other varnishes, they look like mediums. However, all these varnishes, they dry into a clear coat. All these varnishes are very durable after 24 hours of curing. Water-based acrylic paints, regardless of brands, they dry fast but cure slow. Water-based paints are very durable after one day, but in reality, they fully cure in 20 to 30 days. All these varnishes are very easy to use. You have to thin them one part varnish and one part water or thinner. If you plan to brush paint your varnish, just thin it one is to one with water and paint away. However, it is important to note that thinner dissolves the varnish better. So, if you have thinner, I highly recommend you use them instead of just water. For airbrushing varnishes, I recommend you use thinner and flow improver. But again, you could use water and flow improver. Flow improver is more important than thinner. Of course, you could get away with just water, but I highly recommend you use my thinning sauce which will help you prevent tip drying if you're painting like an army or you're painting bigger models like Gunpla. As you've seen in the video, I pre-mix my thinning sauce and just mix it one is to one with varnish. You see here we're applying matte varnish. Applying matte varnish is most effective if you apply them in mist very thin coats. 6 inch away and misting is important for a very nice matte finish. You may dry the first coat with A. Then you may apply a second thin coat. For gloss and satin varnishes, you could apply it thicker on the second coat. So when do you varnish? This question, I'm not really that credible because I have mild obsession with the durability of the finish of my painting. I started painting action figures 20 years ago, so I like the finish of my painting super durable. In short, I varnish a lot. I even apply a very thin satin varnish after I do the primer with this DND Giant and my Spellcrow Minis. The main reason for this is because I ran out of Mecha Black Primer and I'm using Surface Primer and I want it to be extra durable similar to the Mecha Black Primer. Now you see here some Troll Bloods I painted back in 2014 although I stopped by 2015 and never really took miniature painting as seriously as last year. It's basically base coat and washes. Back then, I don't even know how to paint highlights. I have a ton of war machines. Some are just primed. Some have base colors with the airbrush. And like this one, it's like semi-painted or painted. But I applied gloss varnish, poly something, polyurethane gloss varnish before I kept them in boxes. 
sometimes I just leave them very glossy because the gloss varnish is like the strongest varnish there is because of the manner of painting it. You paint it thickly than matte varnish. However, sometimes I paint matte varnish, polyurethane matte varnish over the gloss varnish much like this man o -wars. I highly recommend that you paint gloss varnish first and once you're happy with the protection of the gloss varnish, you apply satin or matte varnish as your final finish. So again, when do you apply varnishes while painting miniatures? I apply a very thin matte varnish after glazing because glazes tend to be a bit shiny and you could only see your blending if it's good once you apply the matte varnish. I don't really show when I varnish in my videos. That's why that is the main reason why I created this video. So obviously I varnish a lot because again I have a mild obsession or not mild. I have an obsession with a very strong durable finish for my miniatures, gunpla and action figures. As long as you thin your varnish one is to one, you have a very nice like very thin varnish and also if you airbrush it thinly via mist coats it's okay it won't really cover those details i read in one blog though that box art painters and competition painters don't even prime and they don't varnish sometimes because they want to retain the details of the model but i'm not a boxer <laughs> so, boxers are my fun way of calling Jero Miniatures, Serio Calvo, and those people that paint box art painting, which is a different level of painting. So, how do you clean your airbrushes after varnishing? Just use a glass cleaner, an ammonia-free glass cleaner, and of course, the Vallejo Airbrush Cleaner. I have a video on how I clean my airbrush, and I'll put the link in the description below. So now, why do you need to varnish? When you play with your minis, of course. I don't play as often as most people. I only play with my kids, my two daughters, and my son. Especially my son. We used to even play War Machine back in 2014 and it was all fun. But I really have to varnish because I live in the Philippines and our sweaty hands will fade the painting. So, I may not have the best painted miniatures, but I promise you, I have the most durable painting ever. <laughs> oh, shameless plug, I really love Spellcrow miniatures, the aesthetic of hand-sculpted minis. Really, I really like it. So, do check them out at Spellcrow.com. I must admit that I use spray can varnishes and even spray can primers back when I started Gunpla but I think I've been using Vallejo primarily for Gunpla for more than 10 years now. So other than the durability that the varnishes give your miniatures or models, you basically would like to varnish depending on the final look that you want the model to have. Like this one, this has a gloss varnish. This Pelcrow Arc Bust, I gave it a matte varnish and then I applied the blood effects and no longer applied more varnish. Since this boss is not for gaming or it's not even articulated and just for display, I applied the matte varnish just for the look. Now for my recommendations, I highly recommend polyurethane varnishes and of course the mecha varnishes. A thin coat of gloss varnish and then a final matte varnish will give your model a very durable finish. I love the mecha varnishes so much, I am down to the last bottle of matte varnish. I do have big bottles of polyurethane matte varnishes and that will do. So now why do I have an X on the thumbnail other than the clickbait property of the X? Paints these days, especially the mecha paints and even the game and model color paints, they seem more durable than 8 or 10 years ago. So acrylic paints are more durable these days and if you're not really playing with your minis or you just need them for display and you're happy with the actual finish of the paints, 
you don't need varnishes anymore. That's it, Pansit! That's it, we're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!